Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade and today we're looking at a YouTuber's recommendation. I was asked to play Cabal. Uh, cable? Cabal? Cabal? Who knows how it's pronounced. But this is a game that has, you know, I've heard of it before. I've never played it till now. But so a YouTuber kindly said if you want to play a shoot long arcade game that's got a classic heritage this is the one now they didn't use the word heritage I chucked that in there because they used the swear word but this is a game released as you can see on the screen in 1988 um, and I although I've never seen it its heritage is actually quite long standing it's been replicated in in um, mobile um, interface form for iOS and Android and the game itself didn't do too badly there is even a sequel and a kind of theoretical sequel as well from the developers a very similar game I mean again you have to remember this is 1988 so this isn't going to be breathtaking but given that there was this whole attitude towards war at the time and this was long after the likes of Vietnam and stuff like that the idea of a shooting arcade game you put a coin in um, and just fire away and kill the bad guys this wasn't unheard of but what this game had was a tremendous sense of um, kind of momentum that was ongoing. The game arrived with a trackable setup with three buttons, but what was interesting about it is just the idea that it didn't stop. I've seen people playing this on YouTube and old footage of the game being played as well. And the game does have a kind of weirdly addictive quality. You can see why people have fond memories of it going to a local arcade or a cabal machine or cable, we're just gonna call it cabal for now, um, in the corner of you know, a cafe, a restaurant, a bar, you can see why people would feed coins into this. But, I've been talking for long enough, but let's talk about this game uh, later on. We'll do some trivia later, but for now, let's get some coins in here. Level one. So there we have a sort of layout there on the screen of what the level's going to be. Now, the buttons are as follows. Uh, the button A is a standard shooting button there. So it's quite straightforward. B is the roll uh, is the grenade and C appears to be that roll functionality and the grenade you have a finite number of them I don't know if you get more of them but all this a lot of the scenery can be broken for bonuses such as extra guns as you saw in the demo reel there let's see if I can oh, and I can actually destroy a tank with a gun which is pretty rare okay and now we've got a machine gun how terribly die hard Ooh. See, the destructible environment, I'm not going to compare this to the likes of Battlefield, but there's no denying it. This game is fun to play. And there we go. I've completed... What was that? That, was, that reminded me of Chun-Li. So what am I to destroy? Well, as I can see from the bottom of the screen, from what I gather, I'm supposed to com continue to fighting fight off enemies until that bar at the bottom depletes. So it presumably is infinite enemies. This game does is actually surprisingly hard. Now, it's easy for someone watching me playing this to imagine, ah, oh, um, like how did I get hit there? I'm sure it's easy to say that while you're watching it. If you don't believe me, get this ROM, emul uh, this emulated ROM downloaded. It's not as easy as you think it is. The concentration there at the bottom of the screen as well. Where are all the bonuses? That's what I don't know. I'm waiting for my machine gun. I imagine this game would be so tough to play with um, a trackable interface. I can't even imagine how this game was played with a trackable interface. The game appears to be trying to anticipate me rolling, I've noticed that much. There's that weird dance. That is a jolly t tune for the fact I've killed how many people? Right, well, it looks like these buildings are key, so let's get these buildings out of the way. The buildings are maybe the priority. Let's see if we can focus on those a little bit. No, I can definitely see why this game would be fun okay now our enemies are learning how to roll I wish you'd use more of these grenades if they're gonna keep giving me loads of them whoa I 
I very much doubt this is licensed by the US Army, but I would go as far as to say that it's got a lot of Rambo elements going on. Oh no, Rambo 2 perhaps. No, I can, do you know what, I can, do you know what, I'm really sorry I didn't, ca I haven't got the name of the YouTuber that recommended this to me, it was only in a comment from earlier in the week, but it's definitely a fun one, I can see the appeal here, well, it's a waste of a good grenade there, The music's pretty poor, gotta say that. Music's pretty substandard. The explosions are nice, the, the audio there. Let's do a little bit of trivia, shall we? Because let's face it, a number of you maybe came across this video uh, via Google search or something, and therefore you already know about this game. I didn't, so I took the time to really look into the history of it and find out some more tips and trivia. So the game was released in 1988, as I'd already mentioned. It was released by uh, the TAD Corporation, T-A-D, but it was published by Taito and Fabtech. Fabtech is a company that kind of changed hands a number of times. Now it was platform, it was released on the arcade, but that's not the only place it was released. Um, it was ported to several systems. It was ported to the Amiga, the Amstrad CPC, the uh, Commodore 64, the ZX Spectrum, MS-DOS, so basic PC, and the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and more after that. There was even a few unsuccessful ports that never made it past pre-production, but those ROMs are available online. So the game had enough of a reputation to be ported to any number of systems, most of which involved using D-pads. So I'll be honest, if I was playing this with a trackable right now, I'd be absolutely furious. Now, as you know, I've already alluded to in the video, that music is quite terrible. It's well, I mean, the main background music doesn't really change. The weird music when you at the end of every round, when you do that weird little dance and run into the distance, is completely out of sync with the visuals and the action that's going on on screen. But that said, the sound of the gunfire, the sound of the explosions, the sound of that helicopter earlier, they were pretty good when you think about the you know 8-bit and lower sound that they had to contend with, particularly in an arcade cabinet pumping out of speakers. So. They did so well on individual sounds there, the little tiny effects, but terrible in the music department. Um, now, the, the backgrounds, one of the other nice features about the game, this is something a lot of people have alluded to when you look at any review of Cabal or anyone that's referenced it. Um, the game has actually got a nice progression system. So at the beginning of the game, you can see a layout of all the areas that you're going to be going into throughout level, in this case level 1. I'm on level one, point, uh, 1 part 4. That's the Mario context there. But it's nice that each future section that you're heading to is in the background of the last. Say hey, this one, in the background there we can see the airport and the army base and the next level is that level. So it's quite nice that that sense of progression and where you're going is kept in check. It wasn't just some random sprites and graphics not together for the sake of it. Um, and finally, there's this idea that Cabal got a bad reputation um, when looked at in a retro perspective um, because of a, a complete lack of fidelity when it comes to warfare. Because you, we've got the army uh, soldiers, you've got the tanks, you've got helicopters, you've got munitions, grenades, mortars, all of this horrific, the tools of war, you know, being deployed in their fullest, yet there's no blood, yet... Um, the weird little funny strange dance at the end, the fact that the game itself, the explosions are near comical and the slightly effeminate nature not my words, the words of a reviewer um, of the two main characters once you play this game in two player because it is a two player arcade but nevertheless I can definitely see why this game has a good feeling, a good memory of nostalgia a good feeling of nostalgia from those that played it but let's get back into it Let's see if we can get any special items from this. Because, yeah, this makes you want to concentrate on getting on those, get those extra items. One thing I don't like is the way the cursor works. That I'm definitely not a fan of. Because when you press left or right on the screen, the cursor moves significantly faster than your character. So if you don't hold the fire button... Oh... See the, the sound effect there for the helicopter? Lovely sound effect. Mm. 
it does seem like if you take off, take away the hardware of the enemy. Whoa, mortar! Okay, I have thoroughly destroyed this army base. Oh, I wasn't paying attention there. That was all me, guys. All me. Oh, well, there you go. Never got to the end of round one. Well, thanks for watching Robbie's Arcade. I hope you've enjoyed Cabal Cabal. Let me know how it's pronounced in the comments. But otherwise, thank you for watching. If you've got any recommendations of games that you want to see in the future, do let me know. See what I mean about the music? Bizarre. But I do quite like this uh, selection screen here. Let's knock that out, shall we? Why not? And there you have it, that was Cabal. So thank you for watching. If you've got any recommendation videos you want to see, pop it down there in the comments. But otherwise, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheerio.